to Nico Props. I'm Chris Fry and today in the workshop we are going to be doing solar power. Basically my idea is to take the workshop off grid um, so I need to prepare for that. Um, I, I've found some solar panels second hand um, we're going to use those to try and power the, the workshop uh, as an experiment of taking the workshop off grid um, and then potentially at a later stage I might even apply the same thing to my house. So without further ado the things that I need to do today in this part is I've got the batteries I've got eight of these leisure battery these are 12 volt um, 90 amp hours um, I've actually got six at 90 amp hours and two at 100 amp hours but the entire lot as a bank will end up equaling out to 90 amp hours each um, got a solar charge controller this is a tri Tryron um, solar charge controller by EP Ever I did a lot of looking around there are a lot of charge controllers out there this is an MPPT which means it's a much more efficient charger you're not going to lose too much when you're charging compared to I think it's PWM um, charging um, so some 8 gauge cable here or 10 millimeter to um, to us in Europe uh, the crimps for it I've got a new crimping tool as well um, to be able to crimp those which also came with some cutters but I think my cutters might still do it um, I've already got wire strippers we're all good there some DC trip switches these are different uh, or circuit breakers if you want to call them that these are different to the ones that you would have in your AC supply uh, on the inside so don't use AC ones if you're doing this as a project um, I've got some pieces of steel here that I'm going to use as bus bars the first job I need to do is the battery pack because these are 12 volt batteries I want to do a 24 volt system um, so I need to wire the batteries up in both series and also parallel um, and uh, I'll need to be cutting wires and crimping wires to do that so let's get on with that and I'll explain um, a little bit more about the parallel versus serial and why I'm doing it this way in a second Okay, so we have 12 volt batteries. Each one of these is 12 volts. And for argument's sake, they are 90 um, amp hours. Right, so I want to create a 24 volt system. So in order to wire these up as one big battery, I need to connect them in series and then in parallel. So what do I mean? So I've got 12 volts, 12 volts. Connect those two together. Uh, one positive to the negative um, and I have myself a, uh, a 24 volt do that again and again and again and I have four 24 volt batteries now when you go in series it doubles up on the volts now if you then go in parallel it doubles up on the amps so if we then connect our negatives on each side together with a cable for argument's sake I'm not actually going to connect that and then the positives as well like so this is now one big 24 volt battery all we've done is we've doubled up on the amp hours right so rather than being one 24 volt battery with 90 amp hours is now a 24 volt battery with 180 amp hours All right and then we do the same here and here and we have two big batteries All right now you would then connect these two together at this point here as well and then you have one massive 24 volt battery 
I haven't made those cables just yet because I'm going to put four batteries on one shelf and four batteries on the shelf below. So that cable linking the two battery banks, this bank and that bank, uh, is actually going to be slightly longer. So I'm going to put the batteries in place um, and then make the cables to suit. Okay, so we are down on the floor with the battery bank um, that uh, I made up as discussed. Um, these are wired in series and then in parallel the cables for the positive side which is this end go down the back and same with the negative side on that end. I've put this plywood here uh, and I've done the same on the other end here so that um, well it's just to stop anything flying in in there like bits of metal or whatever while I'm working that's going to cause some sort of spark or explosion or fire hazard or whatever. Um, and I need to put some uh, boards on the front. So I thought what I would do, and I've cut these, is I would put these on here, like so, but if I use duct tape, I know, like a cloth hinge, basically, is what I'm thinking. So um, let's give that a go. So, <laughs> I've mounted that board that I had everything on on the table, I put it up on the wall, mounted it to the wall and I am right next to my AC power which is here, these are the trip switches for it. Uh, that's my AC feed into the workshop. So um, yeah, and then all I've got to do then is take from the live from the inverter and feed it back into this and I've got myself all of these trips that run all the sockets and lights and various things in here um, will then be on uh, solar panel, uh, panel, power. So the inverter has a charge controller built into it. You need a charge controller for um, solar panels or just basically battery charging to stop that kind of pulsing uh, of power and any noise and things like that, They're things that can damage your battery. Um, it's, there's no, you, you, there's a lot of complicated stuff going on with batteries when you charge them. I'm not going to bother getting into it. I don't know it all, but all I know is you need a charge a charge controller to manage all that crap for you. The inverter's got one built in. Now I've mounted a couple of DIN rails that I bought from Bimble Solar. Um, I also bought the fuses from there. Uh, it seems to be one of the best places to go in the UK for these um, DC DIN um, uh, trip switches. Uh, they're very reasonable at about five quid each. Um, £4.70 actually I think at the time of filming. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've got some 63 amps and some 40 amps. Uh, I'm probably going to need some more so I'm going to have to order some more from them but I just thought I'll grab those and that should get me at least started. Now the controller, uh, that charge controller I'm coming back to now, is the Ever Triton 4210N. Um, what does that mean? <sighs> Dunno. All I know is if it's got the 4 at the beginning, this is the 40 amp one. So this particular one is 40 amps, 100 volts. Um, so that should give me a decent amount of charge capacity. I've worked out uh, I can get two of the solar panels potentially that I want on there um, and I've bought four of those solar panels. So. So, just trying to think what's next. I think I'm going to save the rest for another video. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, the idea of this project is going to be to take the workshop off grid eventually, at least partially, uh, with an AC backup so that if I have basically messed up and uh, 
end up using more power than I thought I was using, it's going to just fail over to the AC anyway. So it's more, you know, money saving than anything. Um, you could have it fail over to um, a generator, but I'm going to have it fail over to the house power. Um, which is, you know, fine, uh, hoping that this is going to save me some money, especially being that I want to do some forging with an induction heater. Um, so uh, that's going to use a fair bit of power. So I'm hoping this system will allow me to at least run that for an hour or two um, to get some a little bit of forging done. So, yeah. So thanks for watching. Don't, um, don't forget all of these products that I'm using here there's links in the description below um, for all of those there are affiliate links so you know that's going to help me out as a maker help me you know do projects like this and uh, and show you how the, how this kind of thing is done so like subscribe share it and I'll catch you on the next one